cyclohexane chair conformation. For any ring structure, there are several types of strain that leads to the change in the conformation of the shape from, for, for the cyclic structure from being planar to being non-planar in order to overcome these strains. There are three types of strains here. The first one is the angle strain, which is the expansion or compression of bond angles away from the most stable one, which is the 109 degrees for the tetrahedral carbon. And then the torsional strain, which which is the eclipsing of the bonds on neighboring atoms. And then the third type of strain is the steric strain. And steric strain is the repulsive interaction between non-bonded atom in close proximity. The difference between torsional strain and steric strain is that torsional strain can be seen between um, the groups on neighboring uh, atoms, while the um, steric strain can be seen between groups on non-neighboring atoms. The conformation of cyclohexane. Cyclohexane is non-planar structure, and the it's the ring of cyclohexane is free of angle strain and torsional strain. As we can see, the bond angle here is 120, which hasn't been deviated much from the optimal 109. And for the torsional strain, as we can see that the conformation of the different groups here, it's in the, um, the gauche conformation or it's in the staggered form, not in the eclipsed form. So the different groups or the different substituents on neighboring carbon atoms are not eclipsed. So there is no angle strain or torsional strain. The conformation of cyclohexane has a certain shape that is called the chair conformation. In chair conformation, there are alternating atoms in common in a common plane and a tetrahedral angle between all carbon. So as you can see, there are two planes for the chain conformation for cyclohexane. One is above the ring equator and the other one is below the ring equator. And there are the atoms are alternating between these two planes as we will see later. So how to draw the chair conformation of cyclohexane? Start off by drawing two parallel lines, which are slightly tilted, as we see here. And these will represent four of the six carbon atoms of cyclohexane. And then start to connect the first two atoms together upwards to form the third, the fifth carbon atom. And then the other two connect them downward to form the sixth carbon atom. Now you have drawn the chair conformation of cyclohexane. So what about the different bonds or the different bonded groups on cyclohexane? So each atom of these will have two other groups bonded to it. So in the chair conformation, there are two kinds of position for substituents on the ring. These are called the axial position and the equatorial position. So when you draw the, the um, cyclic the conformation, the chair conformation of cyclohexane, you have two things. You have the ring equator here, as you can see, and you have the ring axis, which is perpendicular to the ring equator. And then for the chair conformation, there are six axial hydrogens which are perpendicular to the ring equator and they are parallel to the ring axis these are alternating so on ca first carbon carbon number one you're going to find one carbon one hydrogen atom which is um, above the plane of the above the ring equator which is parallel to the ring axis carbon number two here you're going to see that the um, axial uh, hydrogen is pointing downwards or it's on the other plane. It's also per perpendicular to the ring equator, but it's pointing downwards and it's parallel to the ring axis. The other um, hydrogens are in equatorial position. So each carbon atom will have one axial and one equatorial, one axial and one equatorial hydrogen atom. And this is the full shape of the chair conformation of cyclohexane with all the hydrogen. As we can see, all the six uh, carbon atoms, each of them will have one axial and one equatorial, one axial and one equatorial, and so on. So the there are two planes, as we said, for cyclohexane. The different substituents will be alternating in two different planes. So the axial substituent on carbon number one will be in the same plane with the equatorial hydrogen on the second carbon, which is going to be in the same 
uh, plane with the axial on carbon number three and then the equatorial on carbon number four and then with the axial on carbon number five and the equatorial on carbon number six. So if we look here, we're going to see that these three reds pointing towards us. These are the three axial hydrogens and then we have the blue ones, the equatorials. There are three on the same plane as the three axials. The six other substituents, the six other hydrogens will be on the opposite plane. So we have alternating the different substituents are, are alternating between the two planes how to draw the axial and equatorial hydrogens so first of all you can start by drawing the axial hydrogen so first carbon carbon number one we're going to draw the axial hydrogen pointing upward and then on carbon number two we have to draw the axial to be pointing downward so these two are in to different planes and then you have to carry on alternating them between upwards and downwards so carbon number three the axial pointing upward carbon number four pointing downwards and so on and then you can now draw the equatorial ones so they will be slightly tilted as you can see here on the different carbon atoms and this is the final shape of the cyclohexane with all the different hydrogens. As we can see, this uh, the one in red are the one which are axial, the one in blue are the one which are equatorial. Conformational mobility of cyclohexane. The chain conformation of cyclo cyclohexane um, are readily interconvert, resulting, resulting in an exchange of the axial and equatorial positioning by a ring flip. So there is something called the ring flip. In the ring flip here, the carbon number one is going to move downward and the carbon number six will move upward. So all the different carbon atoms will change their position. As the ring flips, all the different substituents will change their position as well. So all the axial substituents will be equatorial and all the equatorial will change into being axial. So before the ring flip, we can see that all the axial hydrogens or all the axial substituents, which are in red, were here, are in red, were in axial position. Now, as the ring flips, now you can see that all the red ones have changed their position. They became equatorial. And the blue ones, which were equatorial here, they became axial when the ring flipped. This is quite significant and important, the ring flip, when we talk about substituent, substituted cyclohexane. The main reason for that is because the positioning between the equatorial and axial are not the same. They don't have the same energy. When you have a big group or when you have a group like methyl group in the axial position, it will be of higher energy than when the ring has the methyl group in the equatorial position. The main reason for that is what we call the 1-3 diaxial interaction. 1-3 diaxial interaction is the steric interaction or the steric strain we were talking about where the methyl group here along with the other hydrogens or along with the other substituents which are in the axial position on carbon number three and carbon number five will be very close to each other in space so there will be some repulsion in between them this is called the steric interaction and in order for the ring to relieve that strain the ring will flip and now the methyl group will change its position from the axial to become the in the equatorial uh, position so now there is much less steric interaction or much less of the steric strain now the steric, this type of steric strain is called 1-3 diaxial interaction we don't see the same type of interaction between the substituent in the equatorial position this is why any big group would prefer to be in the equatorial not in the axial position so this is even becomes more significant if we have more than one substituent. So for example, 1,2-di substituted cyclohexane. If we have something like trans 1,2-di methyl cyclohexane, trans means that the two methyl group on carbon number one and two are in two different planes. Let's start 
to see how can we draw the uh, ring the chair conformation of cyclohexane with the substituent. So when you draw the ring the chair conformation, first of all start by drawing the methyl um, group on carbon number one and the axial position. Now this is trans, meaning that the second methyl group has to be in the opposite plane. And for that, for carbon number two, we know that that the methyl group to be in the opposite plane, it has to be in the axial position as well. So this is the first chair conformation. And then we know that there will be a ring flip. So when the ring flips, both of the methyl group are going to change their position from being in the axial into being into the equatorial position. So now we have two different chair conformation. The first one has two methyl group in axial position. The second one has two methyl group in equatorial position. Of course, the one with the two axial has awful energy. It's quite high energy because of the one three diaxial interaction. And the, then the one with the two equatorial will be much more stable. So this one will be much more stable and will exist more in nature than the axial one. So what about the one two uh, cells. Again, we will start with the same thing. So the first carbon, the first substituent, when the carbon for carbon number one will be in the axial, then for to be in the cells position, then the methyl group has to be in carbon number two, has to be in the equatorial position. And then when the ring flip, you're going to see that carbon number one has changed its position from being in the axial into being into equatorial. And then the one on carbon number two has changed from equatorial into axial. Now for each of these, each one will have one axial, one equatorial. So they both of equal energy or equal stability. These two are of the same stability. So whether the ring flips or not, they both have the same stability. So what about 1,3-di-substituted cyclohexane? Starting off with the cells, 1,3-di-methylcyclohexane, uh, uh, drawing the um, chair conformation. If the methyl group on carbon number one is in the axial position, then the uh, methyl group on carbon number three to be in the same plane has to be in the axial position as well. As the ring flips, both of these will change their position and both of them will become equatorial. And so this is much more stable with two equatorial than the two axial. One, the trans, one, three, dimethyl, dimethyl. So if the carbon number one, the methyl group is in the axial position, then carbon number three, the methyl group has to be in the equatorial in order to be in the transform. And then when the ring flips, both of them change their conformation. Carbon number one will become equatorial. Carbon number three, the methyl will become axial. Both of them of the same energy, so they have the same stability. 1,4 disubstituted cyclohexane, and we're going to be treating this exactly the same way as 1,2 disubstituted cyclohexane. So the says 1, 1,4 dimethyl. So if the methyl group on carbon number one is axial, it has to change, uh, the carbon number four has to be in the equatorial. And when the ring flips, both of them will change their position and carbon number one will be equatorial. Methyl group on carbon number four will be axial. Same energy, no change. The one for the um, uh, trans, we're going to have if carbon number one is in equatorial, then carbon number four has to be in the equatorial as well. If it's in the trans, remember that the axial on carbon number one and the axial on carbon number four are in opposite um, planes. So the equatorial on carbon number one and carbon number four um, are in opposite planes as well. And then when the ring flips, both changes and both become in the axial position. So this one is has higher energy, so it's less stable. And you can apply that to any number or any type of substituents, but always remember that if the bigger the size of the substituent, the more stable it is when it's in the equatorial position, not in the axial position due to the 1,3 diaxial interaction.